So you're probably wondering why this is overexposed. Well, I'm, I'm filming it for a reason. Check this out. Beep. That is a variable ND filter, and it was made by Peter McKinnon and Polar Pro. <laughs> So Polar Pro and Peter McKinnon teamed up to make this bad boy, a variable ND filter. Ver variable, I can never say that right. I gotta say right off the bat, I think it's such a cool thing that one of our own, Peter McKinnon, is teaming up with a big brand, Polar Pro, to create a product for us creators. So today we're gonna test out this filter, we're gonna put it through its paces by taking some photos and videos, and we're gonna see if this Polar Pro Peter McKinnon edition variable ND filter is actually any good. Okay, well, before we actually begin, I gotta, I gotta point out that the packaging for the Variable Indie Filter is so gorgeous. It just feels premium, like right off the bat. And on the back here is a picture of the product and uh, uh, Mr. Peter McKinnon himself. It just feels so good. I mean, it, it just feels right. I, I feel right. The filter does come in various sizes. The one that I got is the 82 millimeter because the lens that I'm using is the Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens that has a big filter thread. And as it says on the box, the variable ND filter can cut down your exposure by two to five stops. So pretty cool. All right, let's take this out. It's so premium that I don't feel like I deserve opening this. It's so pretty. All right, let's open up the tab and boom, ka chow. Look at that. That's one of Peter's photos. And here is the ND filter uh, case and uh, it's just, it just, it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's bulletproof. I'm pretty sure it's not bulletproof. Don't quote me that. I've never seen such a premium case for an ND filter before. I mean, it's really elegant and pretty. And there's Peter's signature over there. And inside is, of course, the ND filter. I felt like I just proposed to you. Also included is the ND filter cap, which is, which is essentially a mini Polar Pro Defender. And essentially what you do is that you put your ND filter on your lens. And to protect your ND filter, you put the cap on and just snap it just like that. And that way your variable ND filter is protected wherever you go. This actually solves a huge problem that I've had for years when trying to protect my variable ND filter because oftentimes variable ND filters have a bigger circumference than the lens itself. And so you can't really put a lens cap on the filter because it just it just won't fit. And so having this rugged cap placed over the ND filter just solves that problem for me and I much, much, much appreciate. And it's rugged. I really like that. Taking a look at the filter itself, there are numbers on the edge. Here, let me go closer. Boom. There are numbers on the edge to help you determine how many stops of light that you want to cut down, going from two to five. And there's a little marker to help guide you to the specific number that you want to be on. So if you want to stop down your exposure by two, you just line up to two with a marker, go to three, four, and to five. And once you reach five, it doesn't go any further, which is actually a really good thing. Let me just zoom out. Ooh, there we go. Oftentimes, variable ND filters have this infinite rotation where if you crank it up too much, you will see this X pattern on the corners. That just happens when the two glass inside the variable ND filter kind of cross paths, forming some X formation. But with this filter, this doesn't allow that infinite rotation. It just stops you at five, preventing that X pattern appearing in your footage. Personally, I thought that was a very smart design choice because I. I hate seeing that X pattern in my footage. And so just to stop it at the maximum level, it's just, it's really clever. And there are just small details like ridges along the variable ND filter to help grip the filter as you're taking it off your lens. And so far, I'm liking it. All right, boys and girls, enough of the specs. Let's take this thing out and see what this filter can do. Okay, so this is totally overexposed for a reason. It's because this is what it looks like without the ND filter. And we're gonna put the filter on and we're gonna go through each stop, starting with two, working our way up to three, four, and to finally five. Okay, so that's what it looks like without the filter. Now we're gonna put this bad boy on. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that on, I'm just gonna zoom in. There we go. And now we're going to stop down the a variable ND filter by two stops. So here we go. And two. Still the same settings, still a bit overexposed. So now we're gonna bring it down uh, by another stop. So this is at three. Looking really good. And what I'm noticing is that creamy bokeh in the background and I get to achieve that at F2.8. I don't have to increase my aperture at all. Oh man, Sid's a happy camper. All right, moving on. All right, here we go down to four. All right, now it's uh, getting a little bit underexposed, but I, wanna, I wanted to do that uh, just to show the difference. 
And then finally, down to five stops. Three seems to be a really good setting uh, for this whole setup. And mind you, it's, it's cloudy outside, not too bright, but it looks, it looks good. And I love, I love the bokeh in the background. Mm, good stuff. The next test that I want to do is I want to test out uh, the difference between keeping the same aperture at f2.8 with the ND filter versus trying to keep the same exposure but by increasing the f-stop. And so you'll probably see a difference between the, uh, the bokeh in the background and so uh, I just wanted to show that, do a comparison, and so let's see what it looks like. So that is what it looks like at f2.8 and I've stopped down the exposure by 3 on the variable ND filter and now I'm going to take off the filter and uh, I'm going to increase the aperture to maintain the same exposure. Here we go. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so obviously overexposed, so now I'm going to increase the aperture to get that same exposure. All right, so now we are exposed, but now I'm at F9, and so you can see the background is a little bit sharper, and there's not much separation between the subject and the background. And so uh, it, lo it looks okay, but obviously if you film with f2.8, you get that nice cinematic uh, look with that nice bokeh in the background. So we're gonna put the filter back on. Sorry. I hit the border into Arizona. The air is so much warmer than you ever were. Woke up in a car in a pretty city. Just glad that you're not with me. So overall, I really dig this filter. It's probably my favorite variable indie filter that I've ever used. I love the design, I love the colors, I love the low key profile, I love the image quality. I love that there's no X pattern, that's that's huge. From the footage I've seen, the quality of the glass is really, really good. I mean, there wasn't any softness anywhere, not in the center and not really in the corners, not that I've noticed. And I like that it keeps up with the quality of my 24 to 70 G Master lens. Cause often when you put a filter of any sort, whether it's a UV filter or an ND filter, if you have a really good glass but a really cheap and bad filter it's gonna make for a soft and bad image and so to not see that softness with this filter on that's that's pretty good and I love this rugged mini defender filter cap that just protects your filter just just so cool it just it just feels right it feels so right you might need to do it one more time oh wow what did you do I did something what did you do my face I was like uh, and then I was looking at the stuff falling in your hair from the tree pop okay I'm sorry I know that takes a lot ready and <laughs> all right guys well there you go that is the variable ND filter made by Peter McKinnon and Polar Pro thank you so much Randy for helping me out model for me and thank you so much for watching this video if you're interested in checking out this filter then make sure to check out the link in the description below also follow Randy she does some awesome wedding photography <laughs> in the Dallas area well actually worldwide you travel worldwide right? worldwide so anyway thanks guys see you later Oh,